Good evening and good afternoon. Welcome to the Meta Breakers podcast, episode 85, starring your three hosts as normal. Hailing from Long Island, New York, we have D Money Games, our future Masters Tour qualifier. And we have hailing from Orlando, Florida, Robert the Warshack, without the the, just Warshack, here in the flesh, here as the one of the few standard streamers in the game, as we've seen his titles recently, and myself, your demon hunter expert and entrepreneur. I hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. I know I've been having a fantastic weekend. How have you been, Dan? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going. Uh, I did my first virtual reality stream this weekend. It was pretty cool. Um, and, uh, I always look forward to the weekends now because it's Master Store qualifiers, and that means I don't have to play ladder. I just get to play tournaments. I get to actually ban the decks that annoy me the most. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, doing pretty well. What game did you play? How about you, you Rob? Oh. Yeah, yeah. What game did you play on the, the Oculus? Um, I played Job Simulator. <laughs> just, uh, just to, like, get situated with VR. It's just, like, a fun game to just get started with, you know? And uh, I have a lot of more games that I want to play. Wow, my cam is going crazy. Is it your um, cam or is it my side? It's sometimes Ninja does that, even though it, like, I don't know. I, I see on my thing, it looks fine. Uh, but uh, that's very weird. Yeah. Uh, but Let me regardless. See what I can do here for you. There we go. Hey, I think it's I, on your end, Rob. I refreshed the cache for you. I got it. Thank you. No problem. Um,. Yeah, so I just played Job Simulator so far. Nothing crazy, but I do have a lot of games that I do want to try. And uh, definitely want to play with you at some point, Rob. Uh, yeah. I yeah, want to yeah, get yeah. Like, some more people too, but I just don't know. I just don't know anybody. Oh my yeah, God. I mean... It... Sorry, oh. go ahead. I was going to say, didn't they like add Among Us to VR now? Uh, was that, was that like a meme? Because they had like first person Among Us, and it looked kind of cool. Um... Dude, imagine like a group of VR <laughs> playing Among Us. That'd, That'd be, be great. Fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure out some game that we can play for VR. I mean, I have it all set up. I just haven't used it again. It's it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, for me, nothing too much. Uh, some of my roommates moved out recently, so that's what I did. That's why I didn't stream yesterday at all. It's just because we were moving all day for like six hours, and I got back, and I was like, all right, I don't want to do anything else. So we cracked open beers, had a fire, and smoked some cigars. And uh, I played a little TFT last night, which is something else I've been doing. And uh, it's not too bad. It's been fun. The learning curve has been pleasurable. Like after a game, even though like I'll come in like seventh or eighth, like the last place, like I'll want to play another one immediately. And then I just keep telling myself I'm only going to play one more. And then there's like five games later. It's like, all right, well, that wasn't just one game, which is a good sign. Yeah. Do you feel I mean, like after you lose, you can look back and like see where your decisions went wrong where you were yeah, like okay, yeah like I, where i pivoted where i didn't econ when i should or where i should have rolled down and i didn't or like i just like straight up just wasn't fast enough and knowledgeable enough of like the characters to make good decisions and that just comes with playing the game like there's certain things that you just can't the only way to get better is to play like just because i watch you know you or have help from you or watch you know some of the guys in challenger on like um on twitch right like, I can see what they do, I can look at their items, but I can't execute the plan like them because they just have the speed that I don't, so. Yeah, yeah, that definitely takes a while, <laughs> and learning the, the keyboard moves makes it faster, too, when you, like, have a hand on the keyboard, a hand on the mouse to micromanage everything. Yeah, it's yeah, faster. yeah. Yeah, but so I just key bound You also have to the... have the decisions, like, in the intent on everything you're doing, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Hearthstone's, like, a complicated turn. Like, before the turn starts, you know how you're going to, like, play the cards, right? Like, the ordering of, like, all right, I discover this first, which could make this and this and this. Just like in TFT, you're like, all right, I need to look for this unit, and then I have to sell that unit to give it those pieces. You know what I mean? And, like, if you don't know what you're doing before the turn starts, it's just there's, there's not enough time. There, the, the, the turns, what is it, like 30 seconds, and Hearthstone's like a minute yeah. and 15. So it's like yeah. more than half less time than Hearthstone, which is pretty quick Crazy. for a game that actually requires inputs. It's not just like clicking cards that are stagnant. <laughs> There's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. Especially if you watch the way people roll that do it really well, where you buy all the pairs of the good, of yes. the good things for yeah. your comp, and then you sell them on the next, and then you sell them one at a time and roll one more to like keep, and then you keep pri reprioritizing what you can sell and what you can't when you yeah. roll. Like it's pretty intense. 
And I feel like yeah, we've lost. You're gonna have to remember how much gold you started with. <laughs> yeah. You know how yeah. much you can sell back up. You're like, now I have zero, but I have like 30 on my bench. But nothing. Yes. Yeah. But I feel like we've lost all of the people in chat because if none of them play TFT, they have no idea what we're talking about. So the meta. Hearthstone. So the meta. <laughs> Dan's over here just like, okay, when will they stop? <laughs> so Rogue. The meta. No, yeah. Rogue is uh, finally Rogue. on top. It was like not on top the weeks prior, though everyone was playing it. But now, now it is. Wow, must have gotten better. Thank God. Honestly. Yeah. When um, we move. Yeah, Rogue is yeah, Rogue is still uh 70% of my games, 60% of my games. <laughs> um it's uh yeah, I mean this chart looks pretty similar, but now Rogue is on top and uh those bottom classes, man. Demon Hunter on the bottom. This is like the first time we've seen Demon Hunter on the bottom, like ever, ever. I think. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been wow. that, that low. Yeah, uh, honestly, I don't really I haven't really been enjoying playing Hearthstone that much. Uh, I mean, we've had this conversation much before, like Demon Hunter feels pretty frustrating to play if you're not playing Death Rattle. But um, do you guys remember what my least favorite deck in the game is? Like when I quit playing Hearthstone pr for the longest? Yeah, it's Weapon Poison Rogue. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and here we are. And uh, and you know what my the most annoying and tilting card is for me in the game that I, I always have to be very exactly. So, um, uh, that's why it's so hard for me to play Hearthstone right now. Uh, my least favorite card in the game, my least favorite deck is the, uh, probably the best deck in the game. So, um, you know, some people hate playing against OTK Demon Hunter. Some people play, hate playing against, you know, uh, linear combo decks. Mizaki Mage is pretty tilting. But for me, it's, it's like winning the game and then getting Cloak of Shadowed over and over and over again and then losing. That's... Um, yeah, I hate I hate Weapon Rogue, but I uh, the deck that I hate more than Weapon Rogue is Garotes Rogue, and uh, it's um it's so cool that this the the most popular deck and the best deck in the game is is a combination of of Garot and Weapon Rogue and Thief Rogue. It's so cool. Yeah, it just goes. They have so much over the top damage that like the previous way that you would win the game against Poison Rogue was like what taunts and healing. So and now they're just like oh by the way I can burst you down uh, from like. Cool. Yeah, most of the time it doesn't matter what you do. Um unless you have like a very aggressive starter can beat them down, or if you're running like you have to run like two vipers in your deck, and then maybe you'll be okay. Um yeah, really strong stuff. Uh but we're gonna get changes soon and we're gonna talk about that a bit later. We could go into the uh top 1k if you want. This is not really Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just a couple things I wanted to okay. note before right. we moved on. We didn't actually state from the start, because it's gonna be going on YouTube yeah, yeah, and yeah. the YouTube audience isn't familiar with this. What we're looking at currently, guys, is basically over all of the ranks, how popular the classes are. Um, so as we can see, Rogue is the most popular, with Demon Hunter being the least popular. And um, if we could go down the list, like just real quick, so the warrior is going to be like quest warrior, right? Paladins, Libram Paladin, the hunter's face hunter, I believe. Um, shaman, is that still the free shaman, or is that like that OTK free shaman or quest shaman? Do we think? I mean, there's it's a million shaman decks. So. Okay, yeah, it could be any of those actually. It's just okay. the combination of all of them. Okay, and then Druid, we have ramp and the aggro uh, for mage. What the fuck, Muzaki? I He's guess. Yeah, yep. I guess Muzaki Mage, Warlocks, Quest Warlock, and then Priest and Demon Hunter are non-existent, so. <laughs> uh, and what I was pointing out earlier about Rogue being on top was last week it was already on the trajectory where, like, Ro Rogue was the whole fucking game. But now it's, it's like, uh, it was three down. It was, like, the third highest win rate class, but now it's actually on top. So the data caught up to the, uh, the reality yeah. of the game in the week. Yeah, before it was like Warrior, Paladin, then Rogue, and then, the, of course, Quest Warrior and Libra and Paladin are the absolutely smoothest decks that you could possibly imagine. So definitely them being up top is not a surprise. But seeing Thief Rogue up there is, I mean, it's just a really, really good, powerful deck. And then we're going to look right here. This is the top 1K legend across all of the regions. And we can see that Thief Rogue, Poison Rogue, and Cute Rogue, all three of the Rogue archetypes, well over that 50% win rate mark. And uh, those are the tier one, tier S decks right now. Uh, followed by Face Hunter, Beast Druid, Quest Handlock, and Aggro Druid. Uh, with all of them being above 50%, all of them are obviously very playable. Um, whether you're trying to hit Legend or just grind some ranks. Um, so yeah, anything here that we can note that's kind of interesting or worthy of talking about? 
Yeah. I yeah. Why, why do people so play good. cute rogue? Someone has to be continue playing this deck for it to stay on this list. Like. Yeah, I've it's literally only worst. played against one cute rogue. Like, I, I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> it's the rogue deck if you want to lose a percentage. <laughs> yeah, but we, we've we seen uh, these three rogue decks on top for literally the past three weeks. Um, and then Face Hunter is always in tier two. It's always the top deck in tier two. Um, and then there's that drop off to 50% where it's like, okay, these decks aren't even that great. Like, they're fine. Um, but like... Those few percentage points, like they make a big difference um, with those top decks. And uh, I mean, Face Hunter's really not that far off. Um, like, Face Hunter's always good, but yeah, we've seen those three rogue decks for three weeks now, and we still haven't gotten changed. Like, it, it's just, uh, it's just one class dominating the game. It's pretty boring. Well, pretty boring. With yeah. The uh, they're the only Go ones on that have the 50%, too, which is crazy about this. Like, every other deck in the game, all the tier threes, all yeah. lower than 50%. Wow. Yeah, I think the um the face hunter being where it is and as high as a percent is definitely because of rogue. Like face hunter does great against rogue from my experience. So with rogue being the it's most decent. popular, yeah, I would say it's favorable. Like rogue has no healing, and then you can hero power through that, you know, cloak. If you get them low enough, you can piercing shot through cloak. Uh, you can aim shot with the advanced hero power through cloak. And, like, what does the rogue do? So if you're playing, like, the weapon rogue, right? Like, well, you have nothing in the early game besides the weapon. So if you don't hit exactly the weapon with, like, the poison that lets you either trade or, like, draw... I don't know. I just... I don't see how the rogue outlives face hunter. Like, thief rogue, sure. Thief rogue actually has pressure. Yeah, it's got pandas. Rogue, much, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, thief yeah, rogue, yeah, I feel rogue like... Thief is, like, a really bad matchup for face hunter, actually. Because of gnolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the poison and cute rogue, I feel like the face hunter would just mold them down. Q Rogue is also bad, just like Thief, for the same reason. But uh, oh. Poison Rogue, it has like an insane win rate against it. Like, it's like over 70% for the Face Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So it's just the Face Hunter that's good against the Poison, my mistake. So Q Rogue and Thief Rogue still do pretty good against the Face. But I've seen a lot more Poison than Thief and Cute, though, on my experience the past couple, like, days. I've seen a lot of Cute on my screen right now with you on it. <laughs> okay. <so>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Um yeah, we had something else though with the uh, meta, right? There What what if people are trying to just like what so we're looking at top 1k, right? Like oh my cam, uh, this is crazy. Wow, I'm in the Yeah, dude, the you're going in the Matrix shadow realm over here. Man. You need to clean yourself up, Dan. You need to clean yourself <laughs> up. Uh, I'll be right back, uh, shower. I'm back. All right. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean, we're talking all we're talking about like the, the top 1k and all this, but like what if like I'm not in top 1k? What if I'm not in legend yet? What if I'm trying to get to legend, you know? You got something for me, Warshack? I do, I do. So uh, our best friends over at HS Replay uh posted top decks to climb to legend, and they've got some juicy win rates here. Uh we have Poison Rogue at an even 60%, uh which is the rogue that we've been talking about. And uh, explaining how powerful it is that's weak against the face hunter. We have quest hand warlock at 59.1%. We've seen quite a bit of quest handlock over the course of the expansion. It started off insanely powerful. So powerful at one point that they didn't e even have enough time to finish their turns. And then yet still won. You remember when we were talking about that? I think you brought that topic up, Draco. When like the, the, the animations of the turn took so long that you couldn't even finish the quest combo. But yet the deck was still like the best deck in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, um you, i also wanted to point out that the, off of this right here like the only deck that wasn't on that top 1k list is the libra paladin so yes i don't think you see a lot of librum like at the higher legend but you definitely see a ton of it while trying to get to legend so yeah it's it is the best deck under 50 percent win rate in top 1k though it is Libram Paladin is at 49.86%, top of tier three. It would probably and be it... higher, just people don't want to play it. Because <laughs> uh, it's pretty boring. But uh, yeah, we also have Face Hunter here with 58%, Thief Rogue with 57.7. Actually surprised to see that at the lower one. Um, the, like that's the lowest deck, but um, yeah, that Poison Rogue is the deck that I was talking about before, which is kind of like the uh, the combination of Garot Rogue, uh, Poison, and Thief Rogue all in one. And uh, yeah, that's really strong. 60% is pretty crazy. All these all these win rates, all these decks right here, like those are crazy win rates compared to what we were just looking at. So if you're trying to get from Diamond to Legend, 
Uh, these are your best bet. For sure. Yeah, these are really, really high win rates. Yes, definitely, definitely. So, all right. So next segment we have, this one's actually a pretty big one. And we, I was uh, scrolling through uh, Twitch last night just to see who was on. And I saw, you know, Hearthstone had some pretty big numbers. And I was like, what the heck's going on here? And uh, Summit, 1G, for those of you who are not familiar, is like one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. Normally plays FPS games like PUBG and a lot of GTA. And uh, he's been around a while. He opted... Do I guess you try Hearthstone? He was playing, yes. I guess he was playing Standard here, but when I was watching him, he was playing uh, Arena. Um, and he had like, he maintained above 10k the whole time, and I saw him at like 22k at one point. So, what do we think about this? I think it's amazing. <laughs> well, uh, I want to know why. <laughs> you know, like, what made him play Hearthstone? You know, like... Yeah, it was so random. Uh, but like I love it <laughs> and uh, it seemed like a lot of people were were loving it like from yeah. his uh, community so hopefully that means he's streaming it more I mean I, I'm assuming he's still trying out different modes um, he's still getting into the game like if you if you're watching like he's still pretty new to like he doesn't know like what the secrets do for hunter like he's still still learning but uh, very cool to see like this is this is a creator that I have been following since I started watching twitch in general and uh, really cool to see him actually playing uh, our game here. So uh, excited to see him play more of it and and find a hopefully find a mode that he can actually like want to play kind of consistently. You know, yeah. It, I just wanted to say from the minute that I watched Summit, he also seemed like he was doing well with his tra chat calling him stupid while he was playing. Yeah, like, he didn't give a fuck about that. <laughs> you know, like at all, like. He did not even like read it or like care at all when people were like cacking at him for making huge errors in his play. So, yeah. Good for him. I mean, if, you, if you're an FPS player who has little to no card game experience and then you're streaming a strategy card game to 10,000 plus people, it's going to be, you know, there is a severe learning curve that needs to be done. Like, not knowing what any of the cards do, <laughs> or like trading, or value, or tempo. I mean, there's a lot to learn, um, for sure. But he seemed to be, like, having a really good time with it. So, like, when he was doing Arena, he got, like, really excited when he, like, played Alex Straza. <laughs> I don't know, he was just, like, seeing someone read the cards, like, oh my god, that's so good. And it's, like, a really bad card, but, like, seeing, making, he, like, thought it was so good. I don't know, I, th I thought it was hilarious. Uh, Which and then, Alex Straza? Uh, the, 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 the nine mana do nine to something, Battle Cry. He's like, who should okay. I snipe? Should I snipe this giant scorpion with my dragon? <laughs> I don't know, it was just, fuck, it was hilarious. Um... But yeah, and I also learned that uh, his chat has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Like, reading what people were telling him to do, uh, and they were, like, being really serious, it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, it was so, bad advice? I was oh, watching some of him, was like, good. I, I watched him get bad. an Archdruid Hamul in Battlegrounds. Um, do you know what that card does, Rob? Do what? If any of you guys don't know what Archdruid Hamul does in Battlegrounds, it oh. summons a board of like the same synergy of the most synergy minions you have on your board. So like he was playing Quill Bores, and then he played it, and there was literally like two. And he, he as the end of a turn, he picked that as his like, um, you know, six star reward minion. And then he there was like a second left in the turn, and he slammed the Archdruid Hamul didn't freeze the board and didn't freeze the board for all of the minions and then it for I did just to put a four four on his battlegrounds board and then just went into the turn and that like hurt me to watch you know like it was like he didn't really like care about what it did even though it's like a really valuable thing and there were like triples in front of him but he just went right <laughs> into the game and put it for a four four and uh everyone was like wasted and it was like oh chat now so at that point i was like they kind of had a point you know like he really did waste that card uh, but um, yeah, but he was he was just chilling out, just playing games, and uh, hopefully it hopefully it sticks. Because I mean, of course, it's great for Hearthstone viewership. Like, it's really yeah, good. Just, like, yeah, getting more people into Hearthstone, getting more people into watching Hearthstone, checking out other Hearthstone streamers, you know, checking out other Hearthstone podcasts like MetaBreakers podcast, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's good to see. 
Yeah. It's cool yeah, to see yeah. someone just have fun playing this game in 2022 as well. Just like picking it up out of nowhere and be like, this is fun. Yep. I'm going to use yeah. my big dragon. Well, he he does play um whenever like there's a new WoW expansion or like, you know, there's a season of mastery or whatever. Like he does play World of Warcraft. He, he used to play it like quite a bit uh, during the when Classic first released. He played it for actually a couple of months. Um, so he is familiar with like the World of Warcraft, the lore, like the hero, the cards, but he hasn't actually played like Hearthstone from what I think. So yeah, fantastic person to have playing the game, helps it out. New players come and check it out. And um, it just basically helps everybody in the Hearthstone scene when you have like high caliber Twitch streamer, like and check out the game, even though, you know. He's got a million followers on Twitter. <laughs> a million. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then the last thing we have to cover today before we move into the q a which is probably the juiciest part of the podcast is going to be scrumptious uh this is the desserts uh for those of you who enjoy that uh dan if you'd like to talk about this uh that'd be fantastic yeah so we're talking about how like uh we've seen rogue up there for three weeks in a row I haven't seen any changes a lot of people are complaining i've been complaining on twitter for uh for the last few weeks um, about Rogue and about all other stuff, Mozaki Mage, and uh, finally, finally, like I thought, I thought we were getting a patch like next or last Tuesday, and I was like, all right, if it's not this Tuesday, it's got to be next Tuesday, and then it wasn't this Tuesday again, and I was like, all right, well, it's got to be next Tuesday. It's not next Tuesday either, but it's actually going to be on the 25th. We're actually gonna see uh, a big patch, which is a little while from now. It's nine days from now, but. It's going to be a big patch, all right? It's not going to be just standard. <clears throat> it's not going to be just standard. Let me pull this up here. Um, it's going to be... Uh, wait, let, me, let me bring this up. Sorry. <clears throat> I was not prepared here. Uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be Battlegrounds. It's going to be a huge patch for Battlegrounds. It's going to be balance changes for um, standard and wild, which is a big deal. A lot of wild fans out there that have been... Uh, Really sad about no changes for. I, is this the first time that Wild's actually getting a, like a patch? I think they've gotten um, like a small. In a while. Thing, like, like something like uh. Snip snap. Like band cards or something, but. Well, they yeah, like they, did band cards out of Wild, like uh. But like balance changes for Wild though, like that's a big deal. Um, there's new mercenaries coming out, and there's a huge duels update, and more, even more. And more. Um, yeah, this is all coming on the 25th, but until then. Uh, on the 18th, which is coming up in two days from now, on Tuesday, um, th there's going to be uh, Hearthstone crea like Battlegrounds creators uh, that will be uh, displaying like the new mechanic in Battlegrounds. So, I mean, a lot of people that like Standard, they don't really care about Battlegrounds too much, but I actually like both modes, so I'm very excited about it personally. Um, so we're going to see that on the 18th. There's all the streamers that you see on the screen, uh, the screen right now. They're going to be uh, showing the new content um, a little early. It's kind of like theorycraft streams in standard, but for battlegrounds. Um, that's how I look at it. And then on the twentieth, which is Thursday, we will be seeing all the patch notes in general. Like we're gonna see all the patch notes. So we'll see the battlegrounds changes. We'll see the standard wild everything. Um, so big stuff coming really soon. And I have some theories about the standard stuff, but I'll uh, I'll let you guys uh, talk about this a little more. You know. What do you oh. guys think? Yeah. Dan, that's crazy. January 18th at 11 a.m. Uh, D-Money Games right here. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. believe you made it I to wish. the top of the list there, dude. That's uh, insane. I'm RDU 2.0. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Um, obviously very stoked, very hyped. Um, they've taken a while on this update. So hopefully like it's just like a massive great change that we see. Um before the mini set that might be something they announce here as well yes. is like um <clears throat> what that could entail um i don't like i like i said i don't play bgs but i have seen a lot of these people that they're having um you know release some of the whether it be a new card new mechanic new hero uh they have mentioned that this bg update is like super awesome and they're very very excited for it and there's a lot to it um so i mean that's awesome for bgs the fact that they're even touching wild and said that they're going to touch wild has to be big as well uh because we've seen over the past they literally don't care about that game mode like they called it wild for a reason like it's just supposed to be absolutely insane and like when something's broken everything's broken right so it's just like what do we fix when everything is just so 
crazy. So the fact that they're opting to touch that game mode um, is a bit surprising, and I'm sure the Wild community is happy. Uh, looking at stuff like duels, uh, they have Regis doing the coverage on duels, and we were actually quite surprised. I believe it was like last week, the week before, uh, we actually seen that duels is a fairly popular game mode, much more than we thought so previously, right, guys? Like it had a yeah, for me at least. Yeah, it's the uh, uh, isn't it the third most popular game mode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, for those of you who haven't played Duels or don't even know what Duels is, you know, it's the third most popular game mode in Hearthstone. Um, so, them getting a change, uh, hopefully, you know, boosts it or makes it fun. Hopefully, it spices things up. Same thing with Mercenaries. Uh, unfortunately, I was really looking forward to Mercenaries, um, but it was a bit of a flop so far. But, there's always a redemption arc. They could always really change it around and make it more appealing um, to us. You know, I still have hope that it could be something fun, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that, Rob. Um, yeah, I think it's cool that they're finally giving Battlegrounds the uh, amount of like hype that the game mode deserves as the most popular game mode in Hearthstone. It seems kind of uh, you know weird that we would have so much craziness around all the standard releases of new cards. Obviously, though, that is their original game mode, and where like you know they probably make the majority of their income as a company. So I, I understand it, but uh, a lot of the viewership, a lot of the excitement of Hearthstone is now Battlegrounds. So. It's cool to see them have like a rollout planned like this because, uh, you know, that game mode definitely deserves to be treated as, you know, a popular game because it is. Yes, very exciting. And uh, I have a feeling, so I have, I have this, uh, so, so we've been waiting so long for these, uh, these changes, right? And uh, yes, it could be partly due to like the fact that they're waiting for like the battlegrounds update as well so that we release it all at once but i have a feeling since we've been waiting so long that not only are we getting like nerfs in standard but i feel like we're also getting buffs in standard and then i also feel like we're getting uh cards rotating out early which would be a bit crazy but i feel like we why even wait like i i know the rotation's coming up soon but like why can't we rotate out cards early? I, I think yeah. it's that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I a, mean, why not? why not? I mean, it's just huge because we 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 will see the rotation occur whether it be late March um, or early April, um, because as we know, the first set that gets released every year, um, the last three sets rotate out, and then we'll also have the um, what do you call it, the basic set or standard set that is all changing as well. So. We have a massive amount of changes like that we're already in scheduled for the next couple months for so for them to like rotate stuff early even earlier than like what they anticipated or planned they would just be they would have to be so broken now like knolls or something that they just can't i don't know i don't even want to say null but i don't know yeah, I mean, it would, have, I, it's like super extreme right now yeah yeah i don't know man three months they, like i like i said i think they're more likely to repeat things they've done in the past like uh, last year, um, Edwin was kind of out of control. So they nerfed Edwin to four, like right before the rotation and then unnerfed him. Um, yeah. So I think like what's likely is, is to be something like that. Like they'll be a little bit heavier handed with some of the next upcoming nerfs, you know, like, uh, you know, they might not be as passive about hitting the cards that have been around the entire multiple years in the last three months of the expansion of the mini set. Um, and uh, but I doubt they're gonna actually rotate cards out because that then they would have to write a wall of text about it on their website for the balance changes and explain to people why like the cards that they purchase with their money aren't gonna be in the game for just three more months of the time that they were supposed to last. So, um, well, I guess if they if they heavily nerf it, then they're basically rotating it out anyway by making it unplayable. So yeah, except it's, work too. yeah, except it's more predictable and they don't have to explain it is more in depth you know like i think that's why i think it's more likely for them not to rotate so yeah i think the gen and baku thing was like something they did not want to do like at all <laughs> but that was unmistakably needed to change they rotated those cards a year early um yep if they didn't do that though i probably wouldn't have ever been a hearthstone streamer <laughs> like <laughs> you never would have probably all the dots never would have lined up for me yeah gen and baku it was quite awful that was crazy. Yeah, having to 
make every deck beat odd paladin's hero power was fucking toxic sorry um <laughs> it was crazy that, just that annoyed me a lot oh yeah it was so good dude and it's like whatever that five mana card was that pulled all the things out of the deck oh god it was crazy well i mean like the entire like ganon baku thing kind of ruins it's like not like i think kibler did it like a i think like 90 videos on the genin baku problem in this time frame do you remember <laughs> you watched this? yeah he 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 was ravenously just just shit talking genin baku about how horrible the design is and why magic never does things like that oh yeah he was not having it well i i think the biggest thing that like connected with me when i was listening to his rants so like i'm gonna like but like i think they were justifiable rants though they were rants um where uh the concept that the hero power doesn't rely on drawing cards and it, it is like the most consistent thing that the, the heroes can always do and when they like made the hero power so good that it's something that you always wanted to happen and always wanted to press the button then it created this game that was it cared you cared less about the cards you drew because the hero power was just gonna be overwhelming with pressure or uh face damage or, you know, like it was just it created a more consistent game plan for decks and Hearthstone than they were intended to have. And draw mattered less. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of similar to like just the card true heart a little bit to um, like in Control Warrior uh, mirrors, like whoever draws just a card first just wins. You know, it's like just the hero power alone just just wins the game. But pretty different. But yeah. Yeah. A lot less powerful, but it's, I mean, that's yeah. kind of Hearthstone anyway, though. Like, if you have two control decks and one of them draws their massive control card before the other one, same thing worked with Dr. Boom, same thing with Priest, whoever Priest got the Galakron to start generating free minions to outvalue sure. the other guy. You know what I mean? That's, that example Pocket can Galaxy. be used with, yeah, that could be used with, like, any control deck ever. The con if it's a mirror match, the one that draws the better cards first. <laughs> yeah. I think Pocket Galaxy at five meta was, like like the worst meta of hearthstone that i enjoyed the most you know what i mean by that like it was like a horrible hearthstone meta when pocket galaxy was at five but uh even because but it was really fun to play like all the giant like cali ghosts and one mana cards and i loved yes. that deck <laughs> that was super that was fun. that was dan's bread and butter oh yeah highlander <laughs> uh, it was highlander mage with pocket galaxy at five and that would be like the, the card you look for in your mulligan every single time that's why mage is my most uh my class with the most wins um yeah nice refresh there but uh yeah we have the <laughs> huge uh this huge patch coming soon and we're gonna see all the patch notes like we were saying before on the 20th um so very soon already to see well not already but like very soon to see the actual patch notes and then we'll wait uh, a few more days to actually get the patch but um yeah look out for that also, we haven't really talked about the picture that they posted, and this could go along with the um, the mini set. And That's a we've Battlegrounds got... card. That is a Battlegrounds card, yeah. But? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that might be in reference to uh, it's... Quillbor's getting a buff or something. Yeah, know. it's okay. definitely a reference to something at Battlegrounds, because that's like one of the good five-cost uh, Quillbor's. Okay, never mind. Scratch everything right there. It's Q&A time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good try, yeah. though. Hey, I was just trying to, you know, I was trying to ex extract some, you know. Yeah, that, that homie is a taunt that gains plus one one for every blood gem you play on a quill bore. So it's like a good, good card. He's a grower, that not scales. a shower. And he scales. All right, all right. What is Chad. this? What is this segment? I, all I see is a questions and answers thing. Like, what yes. Is that? What so that mean? now is your time, chat and or YouTube comments. If you have a particular question that you would like answered by any of us or all of us that, you know, possibly pertains to Hearthstone, but sometimes can leave that realm. Uh, if it's a cool question that's out of the box, like. Why is Alfredo noodles better than spaghetti noodles? We can answer that kind of stuff here, but you know what's what's with the uh what's with the hearthstone question guys what do we got what we got what we got that's cool though that so now that we can we can answer questions from youtube yes yeah, yeah. that should be fun 
I'll have to remember to respond to the comments. <laughs> I read all the comments. I just sometimes don't respond to all of them. But for this particular segment, I will go out of my way just for you guys. <sighs> if scab goes to eight, think that's enough. Eight or nine. Eight or nine for scabs works. Yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd have to touch other things in the class as well, but um, eight would be fine as long as they touch other things, probably. For rogue, what changes? Um, for me, for rogue, I've always I hate zero mana cards. So shadow step, I've always thought is a problem. It's always it it, it does it. It's not a problem until it is a problem. And I think it all revolves around zero mana cards. I don't like zero mana cards. If you play a card, it needs to cost mana. Unless you have like a card that generates a zero mana card. So if like Ysera gives you a dream, like I think that's an acceptable zero mana card because you paid nine mana to get that. Um, but like Shadow Step is a problem in my opinion. Uh, obviously, I think Knowles and Scabs is going to get hit. Uh, but besides that, it's hard to say uh, exactly. I think Mr. Smite having charge is kind of lame too. But I honestly, I don't know if they'll touch Smite. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, Edwin with Shadow Step, and if that should be an interaction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I recently learned about that one. Like it, it, I didn't know that when he first released, and someone hit me with a. It was like a twenty-four, twenty-four Edwin, and I was like, okay, yeah. that was really <laughs> not that fun. It's pretty <laughs> insane that it scales in your hand. Uh, yeah. So. That could be a potential change. I mean, like Rob said, Secret Passage, uh, that card, I mean, that card has gotten nerfed before, and the uh, card is still the best. I think it's the best card in Rogue. So I would love to see that uh, get changed as well. Uh, but there's so many powerful cards in, in Rogue that, uh, yeah, we're going to have to see what they change. I mean, they, there's, uh, pick your poison. No pun intended. <laughs> you know. Hey, yo. Thank you. Uh, do you guys think that they will bring back Highlander? Um, Maybe. I mean, they've done Highlander over the course of multiple different expansions. Um, they de generally wait about two years before bringing back, like, previous mechanics. The only time we've seen this change is with the quest. And they called the newer quest that came out this year Side Quest. So, the uh, expansion where Highlander came out was the, the last quest expansion, so... I would say that we might see that in the mid expansion of next year if we were going to say see history repeat itself. Oh, you mean quest lines, right? Yeah, quest lines. Yeah. Um yeah, I guess yeah, side I, quest was another fucking okay. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Toxic um, reinforcement. If they if they want to make <laughs> yeah. me happy, then they'll bring back Highlander cards and uh yeah. <laughs> If they want me to do another, uh, if they want me to make another song for the expansion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Highlander cards or get owned. All right, we can do Highlander like... cards like promote like a lot of original deck building, but they yeah. also post, uh, they also feature a lot of unhealthy like swing turns in games because then it becomes like the meta where you develop a board, then clear the board, and then develop another board, then clear the board. Yeah, I mean, we kind, of, we, we kind of have uh, a Highlander card in the game right now with Kazakus, which is a super powerful card, and if you draw that, like, if you draw that Highlander, quote-unquote, card, then uh, you're, like, doing very well, and it's kind of the same with, like... Uh, it's a like, lesser powerful Highlander card, but yes. I mean, it's very strong. Getting that... The, t the five cost uh, divine shield copy golem, which you get like 50% yeah. of the time. Um, yeah, that can uh, really just win you the game. And uh, it's not Zephyr's DQA, Bran, Reno. Like, I mean, Zeph it, is a bit different because he was everything. It's not really a card that you play like on two. Like, you don't. Like, you Unless don't you're play playing Highlander Mage. Yeah, you get wild growth. Okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> only certain matchups. But. Yeah, I mean, Highlander cards are super strong, but they do promote the, uh, the really, like, it, it does make room for, like, more deck building options, and, like, it, 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 it makes more cards just playable overall. Like, that makes, like, more tech cards playable, and you're, like, able to run different cards in your deck. Um, so I love Highlander in general, and I would love for them to bring it back. And if they want to put Zeph and Reno in the core set, you know, hey. That'd be crazy. Cool 
That would be Dude, crazy. <laughs> it honestly felt good when they rotated Zeph out because then you were like developing boards and not playing around it. Random twisting nether out of thin air. Like, yeah, yeah. Druids having twisting nether, rogues having twisting nether. That was not a fun thing to have to like always play around. Also, we talked about it before, dude. The fact that they made Zeph and now for every expansion and mini set, they have to update all of his like outcomes for like the new situations that arise, dude. Whoever is in charge of like maintaining Zephyrus, yes, like, that'll be very tough. is so that has to be the worst job at Blizzard because even when he was like main decked and like Highlander decks are really good in tier one, he was still broken. Like he didn't even work correctly then. So like now with all of these new cards and the fact that he's not even like in standard anymore, like I, I don't even want to know how much he doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and the person's just like every day, there's just more and more workload for maintaining Zephyrus. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can yeah, knock I mean, it's out really these complex, but like it's really, yes. it's really cool though. It's really like, yeah, to yeah. think about, but, but yeah, we that have a workload lot of questions is... we can just like knock out pretty quickly here. Yeah, yeah. So I have uh, I have a question. I don't understand why no null goes to zero if you trade one and then passage. So when you if you pay attention to like what your hero does, um, when you play secret passage, you are this you are the not rogue hero as you draw the new cards from your deck, and then once the cards are already in your hand, you swip you like flop back over to your rogue. So you technically draw whatever cards your class is. Um, while you're the other class, which is why he gets discounted when you passage, because he doesn't, you don't passage your hero flips and then you draw. You flip after you draw. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, mini set guesses. I think maybe Warsaw and Gulch. Yeah, that's what we were guessing last time, last podcast. Me and Warshak were uh, were speculating Warsaw and Gulch possibly. Arathi Basin. Was... Eh, fuck Arathi Basin. Uh, Dude, what my... the hell? Arathi <laughs> Basin favorite... is better than Gulch. Uh... Nah, Warsaw yeah, and Gulch yeah. was my that was my that was that was the battleground that I played like all day every day, man. That was that was my that was like the best one, bro. Not even close. That's like the OG, the OG BG. What was the like the control the zones one that was like in, in like an Ashes of Outlands area? You know what I mean? Oh, oh, Eye of the Storm. That was my favorite. Yeah. Yes. I loved Eye of the that. Storm was it was a mix between Warsaw and Gulch and our uh, Rathi Basin. They literally yeah. just combined those two together, and you got Eye of the Storm. And uh, that so was good. great. Yeah, because you could fall off the sides. Like, you were on basically, like, a floating crazy. island. Yes, yeah, so you're on a floating <laughs> island, and, like, all the sides, and there was pe pl places in the middle where you capped the flag that you could fall off. So if you were, like, a druid or a shaman that had any sort of, like, knockback ability, um, or your priest and you can mind control, you would just blast people off the edge. So not only would they die because you didn't die in a PvP situation to like another player, you died to fall damage. They actually took armor and weapon durability, so it cost them money. <laughs> it was so fucked up. Uh, so it was really, really fun to do that. I used to love that match for because uh, I played a lot of rogue in PvP in um, WoW. So and then uh, there would be like one dude on my team who would be like camping uh, like a base. But then I could just like back him up in stealth, a stealth rogue, and just wait there for someone to like, for him to like bait like a team of two to like yep. come try and fight the guy. And then all of a sudden you'd be like, shut us at ambush. I'm here too. Get fucked. <laughs> you know, like yeah. sap one. There's actually and then two of us here. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Rogue is by far one of the most fun classes to play in World of Warcraft, especially for PvP. Like, I, w it was, oh God, it's so much fun. So is Demon Hunter. All right, Demon Hunter and Death Knights. Um, so I remember during Eye of the Storm, last story on WoW. So I was mentioning how you can knock people off of the map. So Death Knights actually have this grip ability, which they just pull someone to you. So if a, if a, if a, if a dude wants to knock you off, like a mind-controlled priest or like a shaman, and you're falling off the map, you death grip your opponent to you and you both fall. <laughs> so you'd be seeing... <laughs> it was so funny. I wish I, like, I had recording and streamed back then because there's just so many great highlight clips. Of just funny stuff that happens in PvP back when you would get the kill from that too, right? Even yes, you would get the kill because yeah, yeah. you can, yeah, you got the ability on them as they fall, and they also took durability damage. It was hilarious. And then if priest I die, had you like, come with me. <laughs> yeah, and then priest had to pull them to you, so you'd like they knock you off, you death knight death grip them off, and then a priest pulls you back up, and then they just go flying off. It was <laughs> there's so much crazy stuff that happens. Oh, but yeah, I back to hard wow, PvP. Questions. It's so much fun. 
Uh, I have a. Uh, I'm gonna just answer this one last one, and then we could uh, right. wrap up if you want. Um, yeah. So another question from uh, Snipemare asking about uh, null increasing if you shadow step it. Uh, sometimes, like if you shadow step certain things and whatever, like null's just bugged. And it's, it's been that way for a while, problem. and it actually got bugged during my quarterfinal match in the qualifier yesterday. Um, I played a two cost null. I traded. I shadow stepped it, and it cost one mana, and I couldn't play it again. So I couldn't kill off this guy, and it messed up my whole entire turn, and uh, I lost that game. But don't know if it was only because of that, but that was pretty uh, unfortunate, and that should be fixed in the uh, the big patch that we're gonna see. But that has been bugged for a while now. It's it's like random times it it messes up, and like certain things like wand thieves and like that kind of messes up too, like more than others. Like, yeah, it's pretty uh. Pretty okay. crazy that we're having qualifiers going on when we have uh, like just bugs that impact the game like that. But hey, you know, <laughs> hey. It's just, it just adds to the excitement. Like you never know what's gonna happen. Like, am I gonna get the bug or am I not? Like, <laughs> it's, it's just so a cool, neat. Man. It's a feature. It's a new yeah. feature for you. You gotta love Hearthstone features. Love it. All right. So with that, that's going to wrap up another. Meta Breakers podcast with yours truly, a D Money Games and Draco Cat. Uh, for those of you who have not checked out their channel before, seen them before, but would like to hear more, exclamation point podcast is going to not do a damn thing. All right. What the fuck? All right. It's not my what, fault. Is this my channel. My internet. All right, dude. My I knew it wasn't gonna work too. The second I did that, I was like, watch this not work. Let's try this again, and this time it will work. Yeah, no shot. <laughs> no, there hey, it is, there it, it is, there it is. Hey, no. Lamau, there it is, there it is, there it is. All right. Hey, and don't forget to like this video on YouTube and subscribe to the Warshack channel. Writing in the comments helps get the video more views and will help let Warshack and all of us know to keep posting them on YouTube for the future. If you have any questions for next podcast, don't forget to write them in the comments as well, and we might read it on stream. Fantastic. That's a great idea for the next week. Answer some <laughs> YouTube comments if they have some for Q&A. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. And uh, have a great day, no you problem. guys.